everybody, welcome back to another Hair of the Dog video edi editing tutorial. You saw the first part of this video where we just did the global adjustments in Lightroom. Now I'm going to show you how I would finish this image for a client if it was an ordered image um, so that you can see my full editing workflow for this image. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is remove a leash. Now I usually go down to the patch tool and I usually use content aware fill which is pretty remarkable. We might run into problems here with this little um, uh, piece of grass, but let's see what it does. So I just select a small piece. I don't do the whole thing at once. I do a small piece, hit delete, fill, content aware fill, okay. Eh, not too bad. I'm actually just gonna pull this up here a little bit, find another piece, use the patch tool there. I don't like that. Just get rid of that, kind of. Hold on, dark area. I don't like that. Command Z to get rid of that. Sometimes you just have to play around with it a bit. There you go. That's better. And then we'll come right in through here. So the key with using Content Aware Fill, it works wonders often, is just to have a really good selection. You can see how well that selection worked. There's just this little area right here. We just need to kind of connect these two pieces of grass. There we go. And then we'll go right here, do this part. That should be pretty easy. There's one little piece of grass left up there, so I'll use the patch tool, cover that up. Do this little section right here. And I find this works the best. This is easier for me than cloning. This is easier for me than the patch tool. Sometimes the patch tool makes it kind of soft and mucky. This content aware fill is ridiculously amazing and we usually get you 97% of the way there. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of that kind of dark spot. I don't like that. So let's get rid of the whole thing. And that's soft right there. Move that over. Little patch tool. Perfect. Alright. Well that part's looking good. I also don't like this. This is not really connected anymore so we'll just patch that out of there. That's looking good. This one leaf is bothering me here. Move that away. Patch that. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. All the rest of these look good. Now, one thing that I see, oh, let's get rid of this one little spot of red since you can't really see the rest of the collar. Just a patch tool there. And you can see these two bumps on Rosie's back here. I don't know what those are, but I don't really like them, so I'm actually going to fix them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Command J. I'm just going to go to Liquify. I'll open, oops, open that up. Make a better selection. You don't want to open this whole thing in Liquify because it's pretty um, RAM intensive and it can take you a while. So I will go up to Filter, Liquify. I just have this little spot selected. And I'm just going to use this normal big um, pushing brush, just a big soft brush. Actually, not quite that big. Just kind of push these two little bumps in here. Get a little smaller. I don't know what those are. It's just somehow how she was sitting. But it's distracting, so we'll just get rid of it. Hit OK. There we go. Those are gone. Command D to deselect that. So now we're looking good. The only thing really left to do on this image is to um, kind of brighten up those eyes a little bit. Rosie is a you know, dark dog with darker eyes, so we just want those eyes to pop. So I'm going to flatten that liquify layer that I had. Actually, let me go back for a minute and show you the difference. Here is before, funky bumps, after. Totally easy, simple. So we're going to flatten that, um, save, because I hate when something happens and I lose the work that I've done. Um, and now we're going to work on those eyes. How I brighten eyes, there's a lot of different ways to do it. How I like to do it, I don't like to use the burn and dodge tools because those are destructive and they can make blacks mucky and they make the white, the lights, the highlights mucky. Um, I'm just not a big fan. So, two different ways to do this. We can, um, I always make a new layer so if I go too far on the eyes I can just back it off on the opacity or cancel that layer and start again. I don't want to do it on my main background layer where if I make a mistake I have to go all the way back and start over again. Um, so that is what I do but let's just up the saturation just a little bit here so we'll go to the sponge tool saturate. I don't like flow of 100 I usually keep it about 40 
And then we'll get in closer so we can see what happens. And these big eyes here. Um, and I will get a small brush just on the color of his, her eyes here. And just one little pass to saturate it a little bit. At 40%, you can see it's very subtle, but it's just a little tiny bit. So now I will flatten that. I'm going to Command J for a new layer. I'm going to use the History brush to brighten these. And the History brush is what's something I use a lot to bring up darks or make vignettes or just kind of change. to Instead of the Dodge and Burn tool, I like to use the History brush. So you make a new layer. You go up here to your Actions palette to your History panel. You do a little check mark under this Leia via copy, which is this history panel is the list of everything you've done to this image. You do a check mark right here next to your Leia via copy. Then you go over here to your um, tools, to the history brush, which is the brush with the little arrow coming up and around it. And up here in the mode, you have all these different screen modes. Multiply is like the burn tool, it makes it darker. Screen mode is like the dodge tool, it makes it lighter. Opacity, I keep around 35-ish. Um, I don't want to flow at 40%. I don't want this. You don't want to use this at 100%. It's going to be crazy. So you want to back that off 35, 40, 30, somewhere in that um, range. So I'm on screen. So I'm going to lighten again. Just lighten these eyes just a touch right there. I'm going to lighten these highlights up here just a touch. And then now I will go switch over to the multiply layer and darken just kind of the dark parts in their eye a little bit. The other thing I like to do, just to make those eyes pop a little bit more, is give the dog just a little bit of eyeliner. So just right here along their eye, I'm just gonna darken that just a little bit to help that pop. Right here, this little eyelid. Make that brush a little smaller. So let's see, we'll back up a little bit, turn this layer off and on. So you can see the little bit of a difference that made just to make those eyes pop a little bit more. Okay, so now that image is looking pretty good. I just wanna um, sharpen the eyes a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Command J again. I'm gonna Command J again to duplicate that layer. I go up to Filter, Other, High Pass. And I usually keep it about 15 pixels. Hit OK. It's going to look all sorts of crazy. I go over here to the blending mode. I move it onto soft light. And I add a mask, which is this little square with a circle inside of it down here below. Now you can make an action really easily that will do all those things for you and select your brush with the brush. I'm going to invert this mask and I want the white brush. So you can be make an action so you just hit a button up here in your actions palette Bam, this all happens, and then you just go in and paint those eyes. So with that white brush, I'm just going to go in and paint just on the eyeball, not on the fur, just the eye. If you accidentally go, oh, too much, then switch to a black brush and just repaint. It's the beauty of the, the mask layer is that we'll hide it again. So I'll turn this on and off. You can see that just adds a little bit more light to their eyes and makes them just a little bit shiny and sparkly and pretty. And that is all finished and ready for order, ready um, for our client to enjoy. Oh, there we go. Nope, I don't want to update Java. Okay, sorry. <laughs> all right, so thanks again for joining us. Check out the Hair of the Dog for more um, tutorials on having a profitable pet photography business. Thanks so much.